Hello folks, thanks, thanks for taking a look at my blog today. Uh, today we're going to be focusing um, on molds, whether they're uh, injection molding, die cap, etc. Uh, all the same kind of process. So let's go ahead and open up some parts here. Uh, what I did is I downloaded a part from uh, GrabCAD from Mr. Uh, Diakoff here. Uh, thank you for using this part here. And so what we're going to do is let's open this up. And you'll notice when I go to the folder that we have everything but solid edge. Uh, we have some iGIST, we have solid work parts, step, and a parasolid. doesn't matter which one we grab. I'm just going to go ahead and just grab the parasolid. And they're all the same. And let's open this up in an inch part template, since I know that's a single model file. All right, so there we have it. Uh, I also, let's go ahead and also change the background, make it a little easier to see. So under view overrides, let's go change that to uh, gradient background and horizontal. And the last thing to do, let's go ahead and make this something easier to see. Let's go dull. That looks pretty good. So now you can see the part a little bit easier. All right. So uh, first thing I do is importing parts. Uh, you notice you get this little exclamation outside the geometry. And if I hover over, it says, uh, the quality of this may be uh, updated using optimize command. So under the inspect tab, we have optimize. And uh, for those who didn't know exactly where it's at or how to find it, uh, let's look down here under my command finder. So down here at the bottom right corner, just type in optimize, hit, skip, uh, hit enter. Uh, so this is how command finder works. If you hover over it, it'll actually flash on the screen where it's at. Uh, if you actually click it, it'll actually initiate the command and put you in the command. So let's go ahead and just click it and go ahead and finish it. All right, so therefore, what it does is uh, actually clean up the geometry. You notice what we were before and what we are after. So it cleaned up some slivers and some things that happened in, in, while files were being tra translated back and forth. Good enough. So let's save it. You know, let's just call it handle. All right, there we go. All right, so now let's start creating our geometry. We're going to create a mold. So whether it's a die cast or injection plastic, uh, this one happens to be, uh, let's just say it's going to be made out of aluminum. So what we're going to do is actually create the mold front and back. And obviously we have these hollow handle, so we need some type of tool to put in there, and it's going to be an insert. All right, so let's let's take care of that. Let's create the mold front and back first. Uh, simply done by creating multi-body. You know, I could actually bring this into an assembly and start creating some top-down geometry. Uh, but it's, I like using multi-body actually. So let's let's do that. So we're going to add a body, and this first initial body is, is, is the tool body, so we'll just call it tool, and we'll call it mold back. All right. uh, so now it's expecting us to create a mold back geometry, so let's do that. So let's uh, just lock to the space here, my F3, rotate around, and let's position the mold around it, and let's give it some size. I want to keep this on center, so I'm just going to use a relationship here, uh, just a simple horizontal vertical. Keep that on center. There we go. So no matter what I make this, let's make that 10. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's make this also 10. Uh, I could also do a horizontal vertical here, but in this scenario, let's, let's put a dimension on here. Let's just use that, or actually that point right there, close enough to my center. So let's go. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so there's my first part of my mold. So I'm just going to extrude that. Oh, I don't want to go, sorry, finite. And let's make it five. That looks good. All right, so now while we're here, let's go ahead and do front mold. Stay with the same naming. Uh, let's uh, just extrude. And 
Yeah, there we go. So now you know this is my Pathfinder. We got three parts. We got a tool. We got a mold back, mold front. Let's hide the front part here. All right. So now at this point, we want to start making the cavity for our mold to fit in. All right. So we're going to go ahead again under add body. You notice we have some other tools in here: uh, subtract, union. Well, in the scenario we want to subtract. All right. So we want to subtract, subtract on this body, and we want to subtract it from this part. All right, so you hide the tool. So there you notice we have our cat. Uh, let me activate it, make it easier to see. Activate that. There we go. So there is our part, and you notice the uh, these little things extend down into where the handle is. And of course, if we ever want to pull out of the mold, you know that that's not going to happen. All right, so we're going to have to get rid of these, and in doing so, we're going to have to create an a, uh, insert. Uh, to replicate it. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of that. <clears throat> uh, you know, obviously the front of the mold I didn't do, but uh, it's going to be the exact same steps as the back. <coughs> so let's just do it on one side. All right, so now that this part's activated, uh, let's go ahead and start making some changes to it. All right, so again, we want to get rid of all this section and have that blend up into that face right there. So let's uh, let's do that with some surfacing tools. All right. Uh, first one I want to show you is a re replace face. Uh, do I have to do it on this scenario? No, there's multiple ways to do it. I just want to show you uh, how this works. So if I say replace face, I want that face to go to that face. And, you know, it's now they mesh together. Uh, but what you also notice, it doesn't add a feature. I mean, so basically all replace face in this scenario is more like a synchronous kind of move. So I'm just kind of doing this. Uh, so I'm going to move this up as far as I can. And when I start doing that, I notice I start getting into um, this little blend area. So we may have to do it in a couple different move steps here. Uh, and as I do that, you notice that little blend stops going around there, and I start getting these little sliver faces on this side. So I'm going to just pick those and delete them. And in doing so, now I have the ability to just continue on up into my geometry. Oh. Also want to get rid of these guys right here. So I want that face to smoothly move into this face right here and match it. Oops, I got one more little sliver there. There we go. Uh, so now let's go ahead and get rid of these little radiuses. So I'm just going to uh, do a command here by hitting Control, or excuse me, Shift Space Bar. Uh, I can pick a radius, and you notice we get this little selection manager, and I can do uh, several recognize. Uh, Feature, rib, uh, see that gives too much. Uh, cut out, doesn't work. Round chain, that goes into the whole body. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll probably have to go through and probably pick this because it's trying to blend all those and try to get them in one shot. That's what I'm trying to alleviate here. So I'm just going to uh, go through, put myself in add mode, and just start picking some of these radiuses. Oops, not that one, excuse me. So shift to the ah, just start again. And I'll just go slow. There we go, that one. And of course if I let my cursor sit still for a second, we get a quick pick. And it goes through and finds that's the cylinder that's kind of behind it. So that's all of them. So hit delete and now that radius is gone. Alright, so uh, I'll probably just use replace face here because I can just drag that into there. But I'm just going to say replace face, replace that face, to that face. You notice it kind of just snapped in there. Uh, let's do the same thing to the bottom. So again, just grab my steering wheel, kind of push them down. And let's do the same thing to the bottom. Let's try to replace face without getting rid of the radius. Let's see how this works down here. Replace that face to that face. Ah, so it leaves that radius there. We don't want to leave that sliver in geometry. So let's make sure we get that removed as well. And a couple more edges here. That should do it. Leave that radius. All right, now that radius is gone. Now let's replace the face again. Replace that face to that. No extra remnants left. Nice smooth face in there. All right, so there we have it. There's uh, basically the main body we need. Let's go ahead and save. Okay, step one.
All right. Next step, step two, is to create that insert back into there. All right, we need the mold part back to this. I'm going to turn the tool back on. Let's hide that back. And let's create the, uh, let's fill in this cavity with some geometry. Okay, so let's go to, again. Add body. <clears throat> uh, we'll just call this one top insert. So I got the part saved in there. All right, so now how do we create this? Uh, you know, um, there's really no way to draw that in there. So we're just going to copy and duplicate that. So what we're going to do is surfacing. Again, instead of replace face, we're going to actually copy some geometry. Uh, set it to chain. And let's see if I can actually get some chain. Oop, not that body. Not the inside. Ah, but again, it's, it's getting that radius. So... Uh, we can't do chain. We'll just have to do single in this scenario because we got blend. So let's just go pick some individual faces. And of course the radius as well. We want to accommodate that in our tool. And there we have it. So let's hide the tool body. Make sure that this looks like we've got all the faces here. All right, so uh, to make this solid, <clears throat> we're going to have to copy, uh, uh, cap this off because we need to stitch it together. Uh, so with a simple tool, a bound edge, just pick that top. doesn't matter the curvature of it. It'll continue and <coughs> heal that up. So now the step to make it a solid is to stitch it. All right, so let's go ahead and just stitch that together. And there we have our, our construction body. Uh, well, we don't want this as construction. We want this as a tool body. So we want to make it a solid. So how do we do that? Well, just right click simply and say, you know, take those surfaces that I copied and made a solid out of, toggle those to design, and there you have it. So we'll just rename this to, uh, just say insert, so we know which part we're looking at. And let's go ahead and activate this body. And there we have it. All right, so now uh, to get that as an uh, insert, we need uh, obviously to be taller at the top because uh, we need to connect this to an external source to make it move in and out. All right, so let's do that. Let's create a reference plane. And if I try to do it on the top here, you notice what happens. I, I can't pick that top because, well, this top edge is not a flat face. It's, it's curved because it's following the contour of that. So if I look at the side view, you know, this is just not flat. It kind of goes flat and then curves down to the front. To accommodate that radius so I'll just create a reference plane and the bottom is flat and so there we have the bottom so I'm just going to create a reference plane there and let's move that out a little to about here let's turn on the mold oh it's a little too far so let's go ahead and put that back back in let's just drop it right about there for now that looks good all right so now let's get that as an insert. So let's uh, let's go ahead and just use that top top face as the size and shape that we want. So I want to put that onto that surface right there. So let's just copy. Let's copy that. There we have it. All right. So now let's just extrude that down to that. All right. So how do we get that to match it? So what we're going to do in this scenario is just do a from two. All right. I'm going to go from there. And just tell it to go to that surface right there. And now we have a solid piece that matches perfectly into our tool. And that looks pretty good. All right. So let's turn on the mold back. And uh, I guess, you know, obviously, aside from doing the bottom insert and doing the cavity on the front, let's go ahead and finish this off to show you how you actually make a production geometry out of this because right now everything is on one file so we need to make individual details of this and add some other features to it we can publish this so I'm going to go ahead and say multi-body publish so you notice it gives us the uh, files we have the tool the back the front the insert uh, and it's going to create an assembly for me all right, so we'll call this, we can double click this and go in there and type, you know, let's call this, uh, oops, handle, 
handle mode and save. And save files. As you notice, we get these little chain links here. So that means that the files have been saved. Let's open up that assembly. So just by right clicking in the multi body, say open up. And let's hide the front mold so we can see what's going on in here. There we have it. So let's, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to actually uh, get rid of, uh, we need a cavity for that. So if I hide the insert, you notice there's no place for that to exist. All right, so also, you know, the angle of this insert. Well, I mean, I guess that could work, but it's more more hassle just to get the tool to be able to insert straight down into it as opposed to at an angle. But <clears throat> I think in this scenario, we can actually accommodate that. So let's go back into it. So how do we do that? Just by right-clicking, going into open, takes us right back into the location where the geometry is created initially. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So first off, let's it's it's accommodate that uh, insert. So I'm going to say subtract. Here's the part we want to subtract. And there's the part we want to subtract from. All right. So now let's hide the insert. So now we have a area for that insert to slide in and out of. So that looks good. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go ahead and make a change <coughs> to the orientation of this. So let's look at the front view. Uh, let's do something here. Let's pull a dimension off there to see how much space. Let's let's turn this into. Oops. Wire wireframe. Let's make this something we can see. Wireframe. I got no back. <clears throat> and let's make a measurement from here to that axis. All right, so we're looking at 8.8. .8. All right, so let's rotate this 8.8 .8 degrees. Turn that mold back on. And what we're going to do is just this window, this entire structure here. And let's go ahead and rotate it around. All right, so let's uh, let's do the oh, I'm gonna drop it here. Right again. There we have it. Turn the shading back on. All right, so let's do the <clears throat> mold back, turn that on. Right. Oh, you know what? I need to make a save here. That's what's going on. Multi body publish. So you're going to see what's going to happen here. Some files are out of date, which is the assembly and the mold. The, the mold. So I'm going to say files. Now these chain links are updated. That looks good. All right, so let's hide that sketch. Don't need it anymore, so let's go ahead and just make sure what's going on here. Delete that. There it goes. All right, so now let's window. So I'm not getting that other steering wheel. Now I should just get a regular steering wheel because I'm not selecting any sketches. All right, so let's move my steering wheel to where I want to rotate from, which is that area right there. I'm going to turn off my design intent. All right, so there, there's dimensions and things holding it in place. So what I want to do is turn it off temporarily. So just by unchecking it, it gives me the degree of freedom that I want. And uh, you can see here, as soon as it starts catching up, I'm going to start rotating this all around. And again, we want to go negative 8.8. .8. And there we have it. So if I hide the insert, oh, I uh, 
I think I might have undid that. Uh, let's just go ahead and subtract that again before we publish it. So I'm going to go ahead and say subtract. That and that. Let's make sure, hide the tool. What if I deleted that by mistake? <laughs> All right, let's do that again. Subtract. Looks good. Looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and multi-body publish again. And you'll notice what's going to happen. Again, a lot of files are out of date, so I'm going to say files. And once that's done, let's go open up our assembly again. And now my injector tool is straight up and down. Let's hide that. So there's the cavity for that <clears throat> to fit down in nicely. So that is uh, creating molds and doing uh, die sets uh, in solid edge from uh, <coughs> geometry from pretty much any other CAD system that you want. All right, so uh, again, thanks for taking a look at today's session. And if you have any questions, please uh, free to email us at Swoosh Technologies. All right, thanks, folks.